everyone, I'm Alaration, a customer engineer at Google Cloud. And I'm Erica Chong, a partner engineer at Google Cloud. Welcome back to another segment of Google Cloud Technical Guides for Startups. In this video, we'll be focusing on continuous integration and continuous deployment, also known as CICD, using Google Cloud. In this episode, we're going to cover what is CICD, CICD in practice, setting up CICD, as well as a Google Cloud console demo. So without any further ado, let's get right into exploring the Google Cloud platform together. Continuous integration, or CI, is the process of automating the building and testing of changes to code in order to detect problems early. Continuous delivery, or CD, is the process of automating deployments across multiple environments in a safe, low risk, and quick manner. Let's take a deeper look into each. CI, again, continuous integration, is the process where code changes undergo a series of automated processes to ensure that the application or system is still working. Part of the CI pipeline may be to build or compile an application once the code changes have been made in order to validate and ensure that there are no breaking changes. This can be achieved through a shared repository where developers commit and merge code that is then saved, reviewed, and tested. Additional steps can be included in automated, such as unit tests, integration tests, and deployment of the same artifact. You should have some sort of tool for source code management, such as cloud source repositories, GitHub, or Bitbucket. You can also have a CI server for building and testing code, such as Cloud Build, Jenkins, or CircleCI. With continuous delivery, deploying artifacts from your CI server must be done manually. With CD, or continuous deployment, on the other hand, this is the practice of delivering new software features through an automated deployment process. Usually run after CI, CD may take the built artifact and use one of the many different deployment paradigms to deploy the artifact. Everything is fully automated and having every single commit to your source code management system built into the artifacts and then deployed to production. Some common tools for continuous deployment include Puppet, Jenkins, and Bash scripts. Now that we've gone through what continuous integration and continuous deployment are, you may be wondering why they're such important concepts to apply. First, they ensure that all changes to code are tracked, tested, and built. Documentation is key so there are no questions as to what features are in each release and who made the changes. Second, automating a lot of these manual tasks reduces chances of human error. Going back to the importance of documentation, should there be any sort of bugs, these will be easily trackable and you can quickly roll back to a stable version to reduce any outages from deployments. This leads to increased innovation and faster time to market, resulting in happier deployment, development, and operations teams. With CD, oftentimes teams embrace the concept of immutable infrastructure. When delivering an artifact, you can rest assured that each artifact is exactly the same. After initial deployment, no additional configuration is performed on the VMs and containers, thus making the fleet completely standardized. For VMs, you can use Packer to automatically perform this build and versioning, and for Kubernetes and containers, you can use Docker. As a result, you'll get faster times um, for launch to images and containers as they're pre-baked with all software and configurations. In practice, it looks something like this. When we have a new binary or configuration to deploy, we must first bake a deployable image based on a full build of a server. Here we install all runtime dependencies such as runtime stacks and of course our application binary. You can automate this in any way that you'd like such as using Chef, Puppet, or another tool. We then deploy this image as a VM instance in our various environments that we test in through to production where we can deploy the same image again. If you're using Docker containers, this is a very familiar territory for you and where you can bake images via Docker build or server-side build services such as Docker Hub and Google Container Registry build. If you're deploying to VMs, Spinnaker is Packer-based bakeries that can support the flow that I just described. There are other benefits that are particularly pertinent as you're deploying to the cloud. If your chef recipes, for example, are taking 40 minutes to complete the build of a new server, you're not able to take advantage of the elasticity of the cloud. The demand has already come and passed. Other ops critical functions such as auto healing and rollback images are similarly very difficult if you're not using these pre-baked images. Another product to highlight is Google Cloud Deploy. Google Cloud Deploy allows users to deliver continuously to Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE, within minutes. There are many benefits of this managed service. First, users don't have to own, scale, and or maintain CD tooling themselves. 
Similar to Cloud Build, Google Cloud Deploy is a managed service. This reduces the total cost of ownership for continuous delivery. There are no servers to manage or patch, and resources can scale up and down automatically to optimize cost and performance. It also integrates with Google Cloud Platform's identity and access management and has audit features built in. This easily enables the securing, tracking, and auditing of delivery pipelines and related activities. Google Cloud Deploy's opinionation aims to reduce onboarding time and cost of ownership by providing structure to continuous delivery processes. You can define releases and progress them through environments such as test, stage, and production, and there's a one-step promotion and rollback of releases via the web console, CLI, or API. In addition, there is built-in support for metrics to measure and optimize deployment success. With increased visibility, users can gain insights on deployment metrics and drive objective-based SRE and DevOps processes. This is an example of an end-to-end -end CI-CD workflow. The first step for a CI-CD pipeline is to host your code in a source control management system, such as Google Cloud Source Repositories. Once you upload your code to your repository, we'll have to choose from one of many platforms designed to facilitate CI-CD. Many common platforms were designed to run all kinds of automation and have since been adjusted to support CI-CD. Google Cloud Build was designed with CI-CD in mind and is serverless, meaning you don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure of your builds. You can configure Google Cloud Build with cloudbuild.yaml files that live directly in your repository. Cloud Build facilitates CI by supporting many different source control services, easy integration with Google Cloud services for testing, and it supports deploying artifacts to various destinations, including artifact registry. Cloud Build supports complex builds with multiple steps, for example, testing and deployment. If you want to add to your CI pipeline, it's as easy as adding an additional step to it. Take your artifact, either built or stored locally or at your destination, and easily deploy it to one of our many compute services with a deployment strategy of your choice. Now let's take a look into how we can create a deployment pipeline for Cloud Run that implements progression of code from developer branches with automated canary testing in Google Cloud Platform. Cloud Run lets you deploy and run your applications with little overhead or effort. Check out the Cloud Run video in the description box below just to get a quick transfer of the Cloud Run and other compute services available in Google Cloud Platform. In this demo, we will create a sample Cloud Run service, add a change on the development branch, merge that branch into the mainline branch, implement canary testing to roll out the new change to the Cloud Run service. Let's start off with preparing our environment. Let's go to Google Cloud Console and log in into Google Cloud Project. In the console, we activate Cloud Shell. And now let's create environmental variables. And enable the needed APIs, if they are not enabled. And now let's set up the admin roles for a service account. If you haven't used Git in Cloud Shell previously, you can set up the username and user email values. And now we will clone and prepare the sample repository. We will store the code from sample repository in cloud source repositories. All right, now let's move to the cloud run service. In Cloud Shell, we will build and deploy the application, including a service that requires authentication. The next step is to enable a unique URL for development branches in Git. Each branch is represented by URL that's identified by the branch name. Commits to the branch trigger deployment and the updates are accessible at the same URL. In Cloud Shell, let's set up a trigger. Now let's create a new branch and open the sample application in the Cloud Shell. In the sample application, let's modify the code to indicate version 1.1 instead of version 1.0. And now let's commit the change and push to the remote repository. 
You can check the progress of ongoing build in the Cloud Build. Cloud Build can also trigger a message via email, Slack or other messaging providers. Now let's get the unique URL for this branch. When code is released to production, it's common to release code to small subsets of live traffic before migrating the traffic to the new code bases. Let's implement a trigger that is activated when code is committed to the main branch. The trigger deploys the code to a unique canary URL and it routes 10% of all live traffic to the new version. All right, let's set up the branch trigger and now merge the branch to the main line and push to the remote repository. After the build is complete, let's renew the new version. As you see, 90% of the traffic is routed to prod, 10% to canary, and 0% to the branch revisions. That brings us to the end of this video where we went over what is CI-CD, CI-CD in practice, setting up CI-CD, deployment strategies, and a Google Cloud Console demo. We have tons of resources and guides around setting up CI-CD on our documentation website. A couple of resources have been added in the description box below to help you understand these concepts in further detail. I encourage you to take a look prior to setting everything up. Should you run into any issues, our support team is always available as well. Stay tuned for all the exciting content that we have for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell icon to get notified each time a new video is posted. We will see you soon in our next video where we will go over different operations and billing tools in Google Cloud. Thank you and see you next time!